it's Lita. I hope you're all amazing. And if you are not, I hope my video puts a smile on your beautiful faces and makes you laugh. Well, here we are again. It's that time, guys. For this Sunday's video, it is Hunter Hunter Vlog time. And I will be talking about episodes through 30 to 50. Um, I think I delved into maybe up to 33 in the last vlog and I'm hoping that this vlog is not going to be um, <laughs> half an hour long but there was a lot, lot to talk about. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into where I am up to Hunter Hunter right now. So currently right now I'm on episode 50 and um, I have actually been watching Hunter Hunter 2011 with actually... Um, a fellow uh, friend, a close friend, which is um, Blade Ninja, who's on YouTube, and uh, that's Aaron, and you guys should go follow him. I'll tell ya, where we're up to right now. <laughs> I can tell things are just gonna get more interesting. Cause, so where I left off from last vlog was pretty much that um, I was suspicious of Wing, and that I know that um, Gon and Kilua were learning about Nen, or the power of Nen. Just from there, everything has kind of exploded and I'm still trying to wrap my head around a few things because there's a few things that I don't kind of get, but you're gonna have to bear with me. So I'm just gonna go through first quickly, like learning about Nen. You know, Kilua and Gon, they didn't realize, and I didn't realize that with Nen, um, it was actually a part of the um, Hunter Hunter exam. You know when I said that I thought that the Hunter Hunter exam had ended? Um, definitely had not ended because it is revealed that Wing Sun is actually an examiner. I really, really didn't see that coming. And then he tells them, like right when Gon and Kilua Master Nen, uh, that um, Kilua had, doesn't pass yet, but then I know Wing tells Gon that he's passed. So I had no idea that learning that was a part of becoming a hunter. Every episode from episode 33 onwards, there's been this introduction about Nen and um, with what different powers of Nen there is. Basically talking about Nen, it's like, you know, like a power within everybody's selves that they can bring out within from their willpower. So I've actually just written down here, um, going through some of them because I, I totally forgot that there's so much involved with this Nen stuff. You know, there's like, um, it with Nen, it might be all boring to you guys, but then there's like Ten, Zetsu, Ren, Hatsu. The main bit that was interesting with Nen, the, that everybody is part of this, I guess, circle of like five or six choices. So there's like enhancers, which are like simple-minded people. There is transmuters, which are like people who are tricksters, using illusion, tricking people. I would assume that that is Hisoka, you know, trickster. Emitters, which are like in very impatient people, very impulsive. There is conjurers, who are very overly serious people, who are very striving towards their goals. Um, and then there is manipulators, again, manipulators are people that are very protective of their loved ones and you know do the right thing and then there's specialists obviously specialists mean they're so special in their skill so um Gon and Kilua and also Kirapika they all go through this phase of learning of what one of those they are now from memory I think Gon and Kilua are Gon is a, a enhancer I think and I cannot remember what Kilua is Somebody refresh my memory down in the comments. But I know when we get to the bit I'm gonna talk about Kirapika, he is um, a mixed bag, we'll say. So learning about that um, was kind of interesting, but it kind of got repetitive just like after the op there was the Hunter Hunter opening and then it goes through the same things recapping, but then again, it's kind of useful for me. And by the way, the second opening theme to Hunter Hunter, I realized after a while, it was uh, the same 
theme song, but the lyrics were different. It just made me laugh because I'm like, okay, can, can you like change it up now? Like I like the second ending theme. It's very J-pop, J-rock kind of vibe I get from it. So I really enjoy that when that comes on. Yeah, I, uh, but I won't lie that the theme tune has so got stuck in my head. I'm not gonna go to too much detail because I don't want this to be like half an hour long. We get into when Gon and his Soka get finally like fight, you know, I've been waiting for this. I had been waiting for it for so long and it was so worth the wait, the whole fight. Um, like Gon, yeah, I, Gon was a bit hasty using the power of Nen because, you know, Killua and Gon had only just learnt it and I feel sorry for Zushi. Zushi, it was kind of very comedic and funny when like Zushi was kind of left behind because Gon and Killua just managed to master it in like a week and that. Where Zushi, it took him like six months. I felt sorry for Zushi. Gon was amazing in the fight. He was relentless. He did not back down whatsoever. Throwing up a piece of concrete. I'm like, yep, every 12 year old can do that. Soka, yeah, we get to see Hasoka again. Gigi, you'll be so happy. Um, Ahsoka is still creepy. And from henceforth, as we go through this vlog, he gets even creepier for me just even more. The creepiness is slowly, slowly going up. But you know, Hisoka is very, very, as I've said previously, very fixated on Gon and the Kilua, Leorio and Kirapika because, you know, he, in a way he's makes all those weird, weird sounds. They're his prey because he wants them to get stronger and Hisoka, all he craves for is, um, stronger opponents to fight and he's his own being so you know as well as like you know the fight between Gon and Ahsoka was good there was a lot of like long-winded explanations of about you know what, what his techniques Ahsoka was using his trickery it was good to learn about Ahsoka's um what it, behind all the magic and everything what his actual techniques were that he used and um some of it is so creepy you know like he it, it, it's it's it is creepy, you know. Like uses like elastic and rubber, and um, yeah, I really don't want to say much on that issue. I really don't. Soka and Gon's fight was great. I really really enjoyed it, but at the same time, I knew Gon was not going to beat his Soka that easily. So then, kind of after all that, after all the heavens tower and whatever, um. Gon and Killua make a lot of money and then they decide, well, Gon decides he wants to go back home. And yeah, they go back home to Well Island. This kind of bit in the anime or was kind of a little bit slow. I don't know, I guess I'm so used to all the action. Things started getting really interesting again when um, uh, Gon's aunt, Mito, by the way, her haircut is so, so weird to me. Looks like a boy. Gon is asking Mito about um, his father, Gin, where he's been at the picture for a while and um, Mito gives Gon this box and then that's when he learns a bit more about his dad. Inside this box is some three little items and a cassette tape and they play it and Kilua and Gon listen to the cassette tape and it is a message left by Gin, um, Gon's dad. It was a kind of a weird message. Um, like, don't come find me. Uh, don't bother finding me. If you want to find me, you're gonna have to chase me. I was like, that's a great message to leave your son. Your son who you left years and years ago. And then the tape started rewinding on itself, basically erasing the message. I'm so confused with Gon's dad right now. That confused me. So I feel like I'm not gonna get any clarification on that for a fair while. Or Nonetheless, Gon still wants to find his dad. I was like, yeah, you find your dad, give him a good thrashing, because I would be like, why would you not want me to find you? From there, everything just gets a little like, I've got to wrap my head around this kind of thing. If everybody recalls the the whole group gone and everybody we're going to meet in, are you ready for the name of this? Is York New City. York New City. That's such an original name. Do you know what it actually is? Spelled the right way. Oh, oh, New York City. Oh my God, such originality. 
<laughs> oh my god, there are so many things about this anime. Just words that they've used wrapped around. Oh my god, there is some originality, seriously. Yeah, so we're gonna go meet in New York, New City, where um, they all were gonna meet up and be a part of this um, auction. Now, still, I'm um, confused about the auction. Um, supposed to be all these special treasures sold, and you know, you make big money and stuff. But um, in this bit of the series, this is when we get into the Phantom Trope arc. If everybody remembers, Kira Pika wants revenge upon this whole gang bang because they, you know, slayed his entire um, clan. And Kira Pika has been after revenge for a long time. And then. Finally, we get to a bit where we see Kirapika. He ends up with a group called No Sudas Mad, something like that. And um, he has to prove his, well, he ends up being with all these other people. He has to prove his worthiness. Well, I won't say worthiness, but he has to prove that um, Kirapika, then we see that wants to be hired as a bodyguard. And also he ends up learning the power of Nen, which I will get to that because he is on a totally different level than Killua and Gon all together and totally, totally surprised me. There was some stuff going on for the, the I guess, the people that Kiripika was going to work for. Um, I guess they were hunting down um, Phantom Trope or somehow Phantom Trope got intertwined with them and um, Kiripika um, with along with these other group of people, they had to go find these certain items, and one of those items was actually Kirapika's Scarlet Eyes, because um, part of his clan, the Scarlet Eyes are, you know, a very, you know, special power, and you know, everybody wanted them. Kirapika only reveals this to one of the other people um, in the group. We got to a bit where um, I know this group, mafia group called the Shadow Beasts. Um, these weird looking ass people, oh my god. There's a photo right there for you. So some of them were so creepy, especially that worm dude. Oh. My. God. Uh, uh. Yeah, so the Shadow Beast Mafia are hired to go and kill the Phantom Trope because Phantom Trope have taken an interest in the massive auction that's gonna occur. They end up bombarding it, killing people. I can't remember what treasure they're looking for. Um, I think it's to do with this rare video game that's known as Green Island and as far as I've been following with this rare video game that's only available for like hunters um, it sells for big big money. Learning actually Green Island is actually a real place actually as well that and I know that there's an arc to the next one after this I think to do with Green Island so that is interesting to me. By the way yeah, the people are interesting in the group, especially the boss. Uh, the boss of Phantom Trope is, um, oh my god, his eyes, he just freaks me out altogether. One of the interesting ones, um, well I thought one of the most useless people actually in the group was a massive hairy guy named um, Uving. Uving. When I heard his name for the first time it just made me laugh because it sounds like Hoover. It sounds like when um, my mum says, oh, I'm just gonna go oov I'm just gonna go hoover it, hoovering over here. You know, hoovering, that's a UK term. We in, you know, everywhere else, probably everybody's familiar with vacuuming. Oh yeah, it's gonna go vacuum this up. So Ubering. That's a that's a nice name. And the Shadow Beast ended up facing against Ubering. Um the fights were really good, um, very entertaining, at the same time kind of grossing me out. Uh <laughs> When doesn't this, when has this show Hunter Hunter not grossed me out yet? When has it not? Hoovering doesn't stick around too long, let me just say. Um, but this is when Kirapika comes into the picture. Kirapika, you know how much he wants to get revenge for his clan, so he ends up going, uh, finding Phantom Trope on his own, ends up facing them on his own. Kirapika ends up going against Hoovering. Uh, that was a really really turning point for me in Kirapika. Kirapika had never stood out until we got to this bit. He was amazing. But at the same time, it was kind of overkill with how much power he actually had. He just squashed Ubering like he was nothing. And when I mentioned before that with Killua and Gon being only like, you know, 
Gone is only an enhancer. Um, Kira Pika is like a mixed bag. He's everything. He's like this mastery of all of men. And it's kind of a bit like overkill in a way it was, but at the same time, I didn't care because I, I have loved Kira Pika more ever since that fight. And I, at the same time, I was kind of, I guess, happy for him that he kind of got some reven revenge for himself. But, but Kira Pika has completely done a 180. He's so serious now so beyond serious and um, I'm just loving it. He was totally badass. But it was very interesting when he actually ended up coming across Hisoka. I was like, yay, Hisoka! And um, Hisoka puts a proposition to him that they should work together. Because he's a part of Phantom Trope, Hisoka for his own reasons. It's not like he buddy buddies with them. Nobody's buddy buddies in that group. I think Hisoka was willing to help um, Kira Pika, you know, get closer to um, Phantom Trope so he could, you know, get his revenge. I can't remember what Hisoka wanted. I don't think Kira Pika made a decision on that, but I'm like, ooh, that'd be good if you actually join forces and make the story more interesting. During this focus on Kira Pika, um, things did get like a little bit boring for me. Um, you know, like he did go back and forth from Kira Pika to Leorio, Kilua, and Gon. Uh, because they, um, Kilua and Gon are trying to make a way to make money, so is Leorio. And these bits, like, there was kind of a couple of episodes that were kind of really slow paced and they were kind of a bit boring, I want to say. But then again, this is a shonen show. There's going to be, like, some episodes like that. No, all of this focus now is coming onto this massive auction, this hidden treasure. I'm so sure it's to do with the video game that Kilua has been looking for, which is the Green Island one. And the only Hunter Hunter. Well, only hunter people, people who are hunters can access. Now we're going towards the end um, where Gon and Kilu actually get captured by Phantom Trope. And um, they're interrogating them because they want to find out who ended up killing Uvering. Like I said, he didn't stick around for long. And at the time they don't realize that it is actually Kira Pika. But um, there's this woman that has the ability to read people from their memories. And at the time when they mention, oh, a certain chain user, he can master all men along those lines, that's when Kilua realizes that it's actually Kira Pika. And then they're dreading. I was kind of getting really, really tenacious. I'm like, oh God, because the lady has the power. If she touches somebody, then she can see into their memories. And she's already done that with Kilua once, but he didn't know when he found out or realized. He's dreading like, oh God, if she like touches me or taps my shoulder or something, she's going to find out it's Kira Pika. So that, because, you know, kill one of the members, ooh, and then, <laughs> and uh, at one point, one of the members of Phantom Trope wanted to kill her and go on to be a part of that group. I'm like, no, no way they would join you. Holy crap, no. But yeah, in the end, Gon and Kilua end up escaping, and um, that is where I left off on episode 50. Holy crap. That is a lot to swallow, and I'm just going to have to know to pay extra attention from here on in. Here on in. Not saying I wasn't paying attention before, it's just trying to swallow all this around this auction, hidden treasure. I'm just like, it, my understanding only goes so far, but... Man, there was some good bits in this bit from episode 30 to 50, especially the focus on Kira Pika. I loved that. And even though it's kind of like overkill, you know how Goku is in Dragon Ball Z where he kind of goes overkill in like, you know, powering up and everything in, and just being, you know, overly powerful. Um, it doesn't matter for Kira Pika because Kira Pika deserved to get some revenge and he still deserves to get some revenge. So it's, it's all good people, it's all good. I'm debating for the next type of like, I guess, vlog thing, me discussing about my experience with Hunter Hunter. Um, I might do a live stream. Um, I think I'm gonna kind of toss it in between doing videos and live streams with this. I've kind of decided, I say kind of, okay, maybe I have, I've just, decided because I would love to do at least maybe a couple of streams talking about Hunter x Hunter and, and there are people that I know are kind of excited that I am watching Hunter x Hunter right now 
and the you know I really want to interact with them you know get their thoughts on it and stuff so from episode 50 I'm not sure when up until I will decide it might be up to 80 90 so there's a good portion for me to talk about in the live stream we'll see that probably be a way off probably because I really want to take my time with the series. The next time I discuss Hunter Hunter, it will be in a live stream, which will be fun and um, planned. Don't worry, I'll let you all know. Look, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, other Hunter Hunter vlog. Please let me know down in the comments of any of your experience between like episode 30 to 50, what you thought of anything that I've mentioned in this video and uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that because I could keep going on and on and on forever. And I do apologize for not live tweeting much um, of Hunter Hunter. Um, you know, just, you know, watching it with someone else, I kind of feel like a little bit like rude looking at my phone and then not paying attention at the episode and stuff and like live tweeting. So I'm, yeah, I will try and live tweet, but it's not gonna be like a whole lot, but um, look, Hope you guys enjoy this video and look forward to more Hunter Hunter discussions next time as a live stream. And look, as always guys, don't forget to subscribe for more craziness. And if you want to keep up with my anime antics, you can follow me on my blog, Alita Kina Anime Corner. And you follow me on Twitter, Kino Reviews, where I promise I will do some live tweeting about Hunter Hunter. And I'll see you guys next time with a brand new video. Goodbye!